Hello, this is Tommy. Welcome back to Chatomics. So in today's video, I'm going to share with you 12 command line tools and tricks for genomic data science or in general data, data science. So I will have the uh, link of this presentation in the description of the video so you can uh, get all the links. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so the first uh, tool I want to introduce is called OhMyZesh. And we know uh, uh, shell comes to in different flavors, so you have you can have a zesh or a bash. So oh my zesh is just a, an open source community driven framework to manage your zesh configuration file. For example, after you install it, you can choose uh, different configurations. So in this way, you for example, you can have those colors to highlight uh, the uh, GitHub branches. For you, for example, here also you can. Uh, color, for example, the uh, folders and also files. So it just makes uh, your work uh, in the command line and in the terminal much more uh, delightful. So I highly recommend you check it out. So this link here. So the next tool is called a Mosh or the Mobile Shell. So Mobile Shell actually uh, it enables you to uh, roam, supports intermittent uh, connectivity. Uh, which means, for example, if you are on a train and you connect to this uh, unstable Wi-Fi and you SSH to this remote machine, but because the connection is not stable, sometimes you lost the connection and then your uh, SSH session will be dead. But however, if you use Marsh, uh, when the connection, uh, the Wi-Fi connection is back, uh, you are ready uh, to back to the uh, SSH session. Uh, it will not be killed. So I usually use Marsh and Screen or Tmax to keep my uh, session uh, persistent. It's quite useful. The next tool is called CSV Kit. So we know uh, bioinformatics uh, or it has a lot of like, different file format and still the text file is still the king of the file format. And CSV Kit is a nice tool to wrangle those CSV files or TSV files. So I first uh, uh, got to know it from this book called Data Science at the Command Line, uh, first version. So now it also already has the second version. So uh, I highly recommend you to go, uh, go through this book. And so this is a link here. And with CSV Kit, you can, for example, do a lot of things. This is just two examples here. For example, you can, uh, for example, when you have a really long lines, uh, uh, and you if you use CSV look, it will actually add those bars to uh, clean uh, to uh, make your output really clean and easy to look. So you pipe it to less and dash capital S, so the line will not wrap. And CSV cut, for example, also forms as, as a CSV kit. So uh, if you use dash n and the file name, and it will actually give you all the column names. So it's just a handy way to uh, to check the file. Okay. And in the uh, in this book, uh, there's a function actually uh, was introduced uh, called the body function. So this body function is just a, a shell. Uh, it's a shell script here. So what this one does is is actually will uh, apply all these uh, functions. Um, of commands uh, in the uh, in the rows after header. So, for example, if we have this file has a header, and you want to grab or essentially want to find the pattern, but you want to remain header, you can use body and grab uh, whatever the pattern that is. And so, essentially, just a shell um, a shell script. Uh, you, you can just copy this and put it into uh, your uh, uh, user being uh, uh, folder and then you will find it. And the other tool is called CSV TK. This is closely related to CSV Kit. So it's also a tool for wrangling uh, CSV or TSV files on the command line. Uh, this uh, was uh, developed by some way. And this is a very powerful tool. For example, you, know, you can you, uh, you can cut out the columns based on the column names in another file. For example, you, you can uh, use this command csv tk cut dash f. Then then you have another file 
uh, contains all the column names that you want to cut it out, you can uh, specify um, uh, like this. So essentially, this paste dash s dash d comma colon. So this is like one row, one name per row, and this one will just uh, put this uh, this file into like a comma delimited uh, one stream. So then you can feed it into CSV TK and cut out the the columns that you want. And also uh, in Unix, the native cut command cannot arrange column orders. For for example, you can do cut uh, dash f and the field one or one or two and two and one. Those are the same. So because they were not, it will not actually reorder uh, the column order. However, if you use a CSV tk cut, it can actually if you specify CSV tk cut two and one, so it will put the second column uh, uh, in front of the first column. So it's very powerful, and uh, even more powerful that you can even uh, uh, make plots uh, uh, in the command line. So you can use CSV um, TK uh, plot and to plot histograms, scatter plot, and you can even uh, just display it under the uh, terminal. It's kind of powerful. Although I usually use a ggplot too because I think it's much more flexible. But this is just give you an alternative to visualize your data uh, in the terminal. Okay, this is the link to download it. Okay, uh, this one is called uh, GNU Parallel. So you may be really familiar with uh, for loops to uh, uh, to do like repetitive work. But after I learned GNU Parallel, I barely use for loops. So for example, in this in this example, so I'm just finding all the so let's dash D uh, folder name. So all the folder names starting with uh, this history modification H3K4 translation, and find all the files that has uh, this band file, the name, and then I just parallel remove all of that. Okay. Of course, you can use the X arc. So this is more like a built-in uh, 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 shell function that you can use. But parallel is much more powerful in this other example which I showcase in this really old blog post that I wrote. So you can uh, call uh, peaks uh, using uh, max2 for uh, chip sequencing data in parallel. For example, here, uh, if, if I have multiple samples here, I can use this command parallel and then max2 call peaks dash essentially that's the name uh, of the, uh, of, of the, uh, the BAM file. The, this is the one of the mod, uh, uh, history modification and this is just input and you can specify all different all those different parameters and you call peaks so uh, instead of using for loop uh, using this you can for example in, in this case I can call peaks for 12 samples in parallel so it's very handy and there are other some commonly used Linux commands, for example, a real path just to get the full path of a file. So a real path of file name, then you'll get the full path. And less add, less add uh, capital S, I will introduce. So, so when the file is too, uh, the row is, um, is too long, if you just uh, uh, print it out on the screen, it will get wrapped. But if you use less, capital S, you will not get wrapped. So you can use the arrow uh, left and right to navigate the file. And cat, uh, dash capital A will show uh, hidden characters. For example, this uh, character uh, M, uh, this is more like in, on Windows machine, this is a new line, but uh, that it's not compatible with Unix. So uh, you use, usually use this DOS to Unix commands to remove those, or you can use seed command to remove those. And, and this character I is, is tab, and this S, and this dollar sign is the, uh, the end of the file. Uh, so this is a very useful tool uh, called B rename. Uh, so you can rename your files on, uh, using command line without the mask. So it, uh, it's also developed by some way, who developed a CSV TK as well. So it's written in Go language, and then you can download the binary and ready to use. So. Uh, it's really powerful. You can it support a regular expression. You can also undo the last commands by um, turn on this flag dash u. So undo. So after you rename some files in batch, it will, if you find some errors, then you can rename it back. So it also supports dry run. So it will uh, print out the 
the file name pre, uh, be before and after so you can take a look at whether that's really what you want and you can also specify uh, the path in, uh, including the, the filters okay I only want HTML files and uh, you can also I mean uh, support for, for example you support regular expression so you can you know, use the capture variables like uh, s1 uh, dollar sign one dollar sign two so for example like you can use b rename dash p is the pattern i'm looking at m here and this is the pattern i'm looking for the replace will be s uh, dollar sign one and dollar sign one so it will be m and m so so it, this can be really powerful especially when uh, the data uh, you need to rename them consistently for a certain pipeline you want to, you can use b rename to do that okay uh, so this uh, is also very useful for me so you can use armit to edit remote files for many times for example you do ssh uh, in a high performance computing cluster or google cloud and uh, how you edit files i usually use vim or like I, know, I never know how to even quit Vim, so I still use Nano. But sometimes I do want a little bit more advanced uh, tool to to edit those files on the remote machine. So I use uh, Sublime. And if you install Armit on the remote machine and also in your long, local machine, you can you, um, download this remote remote sub L Sublime um, package, and uh, and you can uh, also uh, make some SSH configuration uh, changes. And on the remote machine, you just type armit my file.txt in your remote machine, then it will open actually subline in your local ma local machine. So you can do all this editing on local machine, and when you save it, it will be actually synced to the remote machine, which is very handy. So I also have a blog post here, so you can take a look. Uh, okay, the next tool is called ncdo. So this is just a uh, uh, it's a it's it's a tool to just look at the um, the file size or the folder size in your file system. So uh, you, you probably know the do a command to look at the disk usage, but if you use nc do, you can see okay uh, this folder use uses how much uh, uh, space, and you can even just uh, press enter and get into the folder and look at the subfolder um, size uh, the sizes. So it's very handy. Okay, Edge Top. Uh, this is an interactive process viewer. So the native uh, version is called Top. So you want if you use Edge Top, it will show all the process that uh, is running in your uh, in your computer, and then it will also tell you okay how much memory you're using, how uh, how much memory do you have in total. Uh, so and this has been pretty pretty useful. And, Okay, this the last uh, tip. Use Chrome tab to back up your files. So I think backing up files is really important. So usually you want to make a copy. For example, if you have some work on your local computer, so you want to make a copy on the remote machine, either on your HPC or on uh, the those cloud system, Google Cloud or AWS. And you may also want to keep a copy on your hard drive because you never know what's going to happen uh, to your computer. <laughs> so it's good to have multiple copies. And but sometimes it can be tedious, like to uh, copy all the files to to the uh, remote machine, like uh, manually, constantly. But what you can do, you can use this tool called uh, Chrome, and then you can use this. Uh, you can write this Chrome tab file here to to actually uh, execute a certain command. Um, uh, on a on a regular basis, for example, like uh, this the cron tab file syntax. You can specify what time and what minutes, or what day to do uh, to perform a certain actually uh, 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 commands here. So in here, in this in this case, I'm just uh, do, using rsync command to copy uh, to copy all those files. Uh, from actually the remote machine to my local machine here. So uh, you can use all those exclude uh, to kind of exclude all the files that you don't want to uh, uh, back up. And uh, yeah, so this is actually every Sunday 5, 5 a.m. So 
uh, you can read actually this blog post that I had a long time ago to uh, uh, to get to know like who, how exactly to write a Chrome tab file and how to use it. Okay. Yeah, that's it for today. I hope uh, those tools and tricks are really useful for your day-to-day -day work. And click subscribe if you like this um, content and uh, happy learning. And make sure you get the slide link in the description of this video. And see you next time.